Welcome to Sage Audio. Today we're covering how to make vocals sound analog. To get the most from your music, watch the entirety of each chapter for a complete understanding of the topic. Also, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Easiest way to get analog vocals. None of the tips in this video are in any particular order, so feel free to mix and match them as you see fit. If you want an easy way to achieve an analog sound, use a tape emulation plugin and drive the input while compensating for gain changes with the output. This will impart harmonic distortion, soft knee compression, and make other subtle tonal changes indicative of classic analog recordings. Let's take a listen and notice how easy it is to achieve this sound. Emulate slower tape with EQ. If you'd prefer not to use a tape emulator, you can use an equalizer to emulate the frequency response of slower moving tape. For example, I could use a high shelf filter and dip the highs by 3 dB, then subtly boost my lows and low mids. Let's listen and notice how this EQ softens the vocal and makes it slightly classic. If you're enjoying the video, consider hitting the like button. It really helps us bring you more videos. Use advanced tape emulation. Similar to chapter one, we can use tape emulation to create analog vocals, but utilize advanced settings to achieve it. With Satin by Yuhi, I'll lower the tape speed to 15 inches per second, introduce mild asperity, which is dynamic stereo noise, and introduce an encoder to give the highs a classic sound. I'll also drive the input but use auto makeup gain to keep the current volume. Let's listen and notice how the mild distortion, equalization, and compression are all occurring to the vocal. Use modulated saturation. Saturn 2 lets you create envelopes and oscillators to dynamically affect your distortion. For example, I can distort my mid-band of frequencies while introducing envelopes to my crossovers. As a result, the frequency range of this band will dynamically increase, and so too will the distortion on the band. This is just one example of hundreds where you can make program-dependent distortion and emulate various forms of analog equipment. Let's listen and notice how the vocal becomes more distorted during louder passages. Only a small percentage of people that watch our videos are subscribed, so if you're enjoying the video, consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Plate or Chamber Reverb if you want to keep your vocal sounding analog, it's best to use reverbs that were around in previous generations of recording. For example, plate and chamber reverbs were popular at the time, so let's emulate both, starting with presets and altering some settings where needed. Let's listen and notice how both plate and chamber reverbs give the vocal a classic quality. Combining free saturators. If you'd prefer not to purchase saturators but still want your vocal to have an analog sound, try both Saturator by Softube and Prefet by Asynthize, both of which are free saturator plugins that when used sparingly can create a great analog sound full of subtle distortions. Let's take a listen and notice how much these free plugins alter the dynamic range, frequency response, and total harmonic distortion. Starting with preamp emulation. 
If you're starting a vocal chain, use a preamp emulator first to achieve analog tonalities before subsequent processing. I'll use a Neve emulator to accomplish subtle distortion and maybe even a little bit of equalization to make it seem like the vocal was run through its circuit. Let's listen and imagine this effect as the foundation for a complex signal chain. using analog emulated delay. Similar to the emulated reverb we discussed in chapter five, we can utilize analog delay to make the vocal sound as if it's from a previous generation. I'll use an emulation of the Roland Space Echo to mimic temporal processing from the 1970s and 80s. I'll sync the delays to the host BPM and combine both reverb and delay. Let's take a listen to it. Emulating classic microphones. On occasion, I'll use an EQ to mimic the frequency response of classic popular condenser microphones. For example, if I wanted to emulate the U87, I would use a response in which 60 Hz and below is dipped by 6 dB, 500 Hz is boosted a half dB, and 9.5 kHz is boosted before attenuation to the highs. The response of your microphone will need to be kept in mind when you're doing this, since odds are it won't be completely flat either. Let's take a listen and notice the subtle changes the EQ makes. Emulating classic preamps. Similar to our last chapter, I can use an EQ to mimic the response of a classic preamp. For example, I could emulate a Neve 1073 with some very subtle dips to the lows and highs, or an API 512C with boost to the lows and highs, and a slight tilt filter. It's not perfect by any means, but it'll get you closer to the sound of these preamps. Let's take a listen and notice the differences between the 1073 and 512 preamp emulation. If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with a link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.